Hello and welcome to another episode of Factorio Tightening the Belt Mega Base Guide. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me again. So I streamed yesterday, uh, Wednesday, and I did a bit of work. Uh, if you want to check that out, I did upload it to YouTube where you can check out the VOD on my Twitch, which is always linked in the description. Uh, but I moved over this copper line so it's actually lined up where it should be. I redid some of these uh, split offs here so that they kind of uh, work with where this is going to line up because now these four can just come straight down aside from this robo port and not hit these. Uh, I still need to shuffle a few things over, but we did that. I upgraded um, at least all the furnace, all the smelters that we're using to steel smelters to conserve coal. Uh, and then I've done, I started doing the same over here. I didn't get too far because we ran out of furnaces, but I did these two uh, steel smelters so we can conserve a little coal there. And uh, just for anyone who's wondering, uh, the reason you can serve coal is because they smelt twice as fast as a stone furnace, but they don't use more coal. Uh, so that's, uh, that's kind of how that works. And then we ratted the space science up as well. I brought it over and just brought it down these sides. And we actually have another rocket ready to launch, which we may do at the end of the episode here if we can throw together a satellite. Uh, but I, I want to work on artillery stuff. Like I said, we would in the next episode. So first off, uh, I want to show you what I've done is I've done a little bit of a, a power backup system. Now this is more of an advanced version, which I can go over in a second, but I do want to run up here and just demonstrate with you uh, what I've done here because uh, this is using an item we haven't covered before, uh, which is the power switch. So this guy uh, used to control the connection of the electric network can also be controlled by circuit network. Okay, so what we've done is we've basically set it up so that our nuclear power is our main power source. We're now only running on nuclear. Uh, but if that starts to become not enough, like if we have some massive power surge or something, uh, like maybe we're doing science and lasers are shooting or something, um, then this will then kick on. But until that point, the steam is not ever on. Uh, now, eventually here in the near future, I do want to just tear this down entirely and just do full nuclear, but I wasn't really able to do that uh, with the time I had. So I set this up and it's a very simple system. So what we have here is the power switch. And this guy, uh, this guy has two connecting sides. Um, so he has a left and a right side. The graphics, this is not in HD um, or high res, but on this left side, there's a way to connect and on this right side there's, as you can see here. So this power pole and this power pole are connected to it, but they're not connected to each other and they're not connected within this to each other. Uh, now you're probably wondering, how did I get these? Cause if you, um, I'll demonstrate for you here. If you just place one down, it auto connects, right? There's no way to make it not connect automatically, I don't believe. Uh, but what you can do, um, first off, I'm going, you just take a copper cable like you would a circuit network cable and just put it there. Uh, and then to disconnect it, and I will have, I'll end up disconnecting what I just did, but disconnect it, you just shift left click, and it will disconnect all the wires from this. So of course now we need to rewire it, but that's how you would disconnect it from this other network, because then this, in this whole system, is actually on a separate power network from this one. And this power switch, I've connected to an accumulator. Okay, so you can wire up accumulators, and when you do wire them, it'll read the charge level and output signal A. Now, you can change this if you want, but we're just going to use A. So I've connected from the accumulator to here, and so A is going to represent the power level, right? If A is 50, it's 50% power level. If it's 10, it's 10%, so on and so forth. So what I've done is I've just said enable condition if A is less than 50. So if this accumulator drops below 50%, it's going to tell this to turn on and it's going to then turn uh, hook these networks together and uh, turn on the steam. Okay, see it's not actually letting me turn it on because this is overriding it, but we turn this on. Now, one note about this type of thing that can be an issue, um, I'm not worried about it here because it's a very uh, low chance that it's ever gonna happen, like the fact that I'd even need to turn this on. But one thing that can happen with this is it's going to kind of create a, a, a bit of a loop, like a really fast turning on and off because what will happen is uh, if we have like a power surge where this isn't enough, this will get below 50, this will kick on, which will turn this on, and then this will obviously be enough power to supplement and recharge the accumulator, so it's gonna hit 50 again, and then that's gonna turn this off, which turns this off, and then since this is still not enough power, it's gonna drop back down and turn this on, so on and so forth, so it's gonna flip on and off, uh, which, is a little bit of a problem, but you can do some other stuff like this more advanced one. 
um, down here uses a couple combinators to kind of give more of a range, which is uh, certainly doable. So that's that. I just want to show you that. I do want to work on artillery. So what we've done, uh, I suppose I should show that other power switch. I really don't want to take much time doing this though, because I do want to get artillery going. Uh, but and this can actually be done with less combinators. This can be done, I think, with one or two combinators. Uh, this can be done more efficiently, but... Uh, so what this guy is doing is this is taking an A, the charge, and saying if it's less than 50, output S. And you can see it is because this isn't 50. And then this guy is saying if A is more than 80, so if the charge is more than 80%, output R. And then this guy, this is an SR latch, or, or an LR latch, or whatever. Um, you just, so this is saying if S is greater than R, meaning if if this is outputting one S, these can't both output at the same time. So if this is outputting S, and which is below 50, and this is not outputting R, then output S, and this is turns on if S is greater than one. So essentially, pretty much it only turns this on if the accumulator is less than 50%. Uh, but then it won't turn it, but then there's like a range. Um, to up to 80%. So that's kind of a little more advanced way to do it. But let's work on artillery. So I'm running up here because we want some artillery shells and I set up explosives uh, right here. And for artillery shells, we need uh, radars and explosive cannon shells. So explosive cannon shells are going to need steel, copper, and explosives. So we need to do a few things here to get this working. I'm just gonna set this up here I don't really plan to expand this much. This is actually way more production than I need. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to have this guy make the cannon shells and this guy make the artillery shells, okay? So they're both going to grab from here. They both need this. And then we're going to use a long-handed inserter to directly insert the cannon shells because I don't really want them myself. Like, I'm not really ever going to use them in a tank. That's my personal preference. Um, so this is ex inserting these finished guys into here. Uh, this one also though needs steel and plastic. Uh, now plastic, we can quite easily just split over here. Uh, let's make a couple ingredients. So this guy can just come over and then steel we're gonna have to request in because we don't have steel anywhere around here. Uh, and I'm not even, no, we do have it in the network. I did add it uh, somewhere, I thought. Oh no, I didn't, I got rid of this buffer. We'll need to add it to the network, but that's easy enough. Um, so the bots, it's going to be a bit of a flight distance for the bots to get the steel over here, but I, I still would prefer this rather than belting it all the way up. So that's going to do that. He needs steel. And then this guy needs radar. So what we're going to do is uh, I'd actually prefer them to share a requester chest if possible. Um, I'm going to rearrange a few things here, see if I can get this <laughs> to do what I want to do. Uh, because if we do this... Yeah, there we go. So he's going to grab explosives. It's going to be wonky because he's not going to grab from this one. So that's actually not really going to work. It could if I move this. Maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure. We'll see. Uh, because he's going to insert into there and then I can actually move this power pole over. Uh, and we can have this share a requester. It doesn't really matter. I mean, the requesters are cheap. But space-wise, since we had this one here, it, they would have to use two. Um, so we want to just request some steel. We'll just do like 20 steel. So I mean, this takes two, so that's 10 crafts. And then this takes radar, we'll say 10 radar to equal 10 crafts as well. This should be in Roboport range, which it is. Uh, we'll need this guy here. And the, oh, we already, we do have, um, it must be in the storage. We have 647 steel. We probably don't need it in the network right now. Uh, so this guy's gonna go he's gonna do that and then this takes four of these Okay, so really we probably want I have some of these made maybe we should like kick the other one up to assembler three Or better yet. I could even speed module it um, I'm gonna take some of these actually myself So let's go ahead and bump him up, that's gonna give an increased speed. Ideally, I want you would want this to actually be like four times the speed, uh, which it's not. I'm gonna handcraft these because I don't feel like walking down there. Uh, so this guy's going and then he needs an output. So we're just gonna have him output into a passive provider so I can grab them. And he's gonna output here. 
Okay, so we're gonna let that chug along now. Like I said before, the actual artillery wagon and turret are quite cheap. Uh, this one is just iron, or sorry, iron gears, steel, pipe, advanced circuits, and engines, all of which we have. Uh, and then the turret itself is um, gonna require some concrete as well and steel. Uh, I wanna play around with the wagon, the artillery wagon, because it uh, goes on a train, obviously, and is uh, it's pretty awesome. Plus, I don't think we, I don't think we have anything artillery range here. We may. The range is pretty ridiculous, and I'll explain how that works here in a minute. Okay, so this is a craft speed of two. This is 0.75. It's not going to be four times, um, but actually, that may be sufficient because this takes 15 seconds. Okay, we'll just leave it at that. Okay, sweet. So I'm just going to. These stack in ones, by the way, so I'm just going to cap this, like, there. Uh, that's a fair bit. Uh, okay, so let's work on this guy, and I think all we needed was the engines for this. So, had a box of engines that I've apparently gotten rid of. I think I put them in storage. Engines. I know I had a ton of engines. Let's make one of those. Can we make another one? Oh, come on, man. I know I was making engine. I know I had engine, like, a ton of them. Maybe not. All right, well, we're making them down by electric engines for uh, purple science anyways. So let's go ahead and do that. I've made one of these, uh, and then let's see. So you, um, they store up some in here. They store up five, so I can just come along and grab them. Oh, now we need steel. Whoops. Probably grabbed way too many. Okay, well, we'll start with two. So we have that, and then we also want a targeter. Uh, or, yeah, targeting remote. You only need one of these unless you lose it. Uh, so it's just a craft thing, and then just keep it in your inventory. Okay, so first off, uh, when I take this out, you'll see a zero there. And that demonstrates uh, the number of artillery uh, units, I'll say units because there's a wagon and a turret, but the artillery turret or wagons um, that are within or, or that are within range to shoot at something, I believe. Um, it may, we'll have to test it out to be sure. Now the range for this is interesting because it has two ranges. It has a range for automatic firing mode and a range for manual firing mode. Uh, the manual firing mode is going to give you a much larger range uh, than the automatic firing mode, but of course it does require you to, uh, to manually use this thing to target stuff. If you just leave it um, and it and it gets in range of a base, uh, then it will automatically fire on a base. If uh, for the for the wagons, uh, if it's stopped. Now, obviously, the turrets are stationary, so they're always stopped. Um, but the wagons, since they go on a train, uh, they won't shoot uh, while mobile, and they also, based on my testing previously, will not shoot while stopped at a signal. They have to be either the train has to be in manual or they has to be stopped at a station. Um, for it to shoot. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take this and hopefully I don't get mowed down by another train. So here's this. These things look super cool. They look even better. Let me actually lay one out sideways for you. Looks better that way. There we go. Super cool. All right, so we've got those. And we're gonna want a locomotive on the other end. And some solid fuel or something would be great because this uh, these artillery wagons are like three times the weight of a cargo wagon, so it's <laughs> it's gonna be real heavy and real slow. Um, that all that fuels in there. I'm seeing if I can hijack. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we have that there. Uh, so now if I take this guy, uh, okay. So it's actually the amount of shells, I believe. If we stick one in there. Uh, okay, so if we show range, turret coverage, this is the coverage of it in automatic, okay? I'm not, I don't have this selected, so this is its range in automatic mode. In manual mode, you can see it greatly expands. And when I do this, this is now, uh, so I can't, it doesn't show me in this view, uh, but if I go to map view and uh, give me one second here, guys.
apologize for that, some random noise in my house. Um, so if we go into map view now, uh, it's gonna show one. So this is the amount of actually ammo in there. So if we stick more ammo in there, and these stack in ones as I mentioned, but they do obviously fit more than one in here. So we have three and two. So now if we go here, um, this shows, wow, okay, this thing is like, why is it? That's it. okay, it goes to zero. I'm sorry, I haven't experimented with this a ton. Um, so it's actually the, the wagons, I apologize for the confusion. It's the number of, of actual artillery units, whether it be wagons or turrets you have available um, that have ammo. So I was confused because uh, they do need ammo in them for it to actually count. Uh, they won't count them unless they have ammo. But we need to get out of this train's way, so let's go ahead and drive off. Um, this is gonna be very slow because uh, it's one locomotive and these things are very heavy. Okay, now if I were to drive past any biter bases within the automatic range, it would shoot on them uh, once we stopped. But we aren't close to any biter bases, so probably should have brought more track. Uh, we're just gonna drive to the end of the rail here. And actually, is there... Yeah, so we're at the end of the rail. Um, I'm just going to make all the rest of the rail and see how far we can get. Now, the interesting thing about these, too, is that they will actually reveal out the map for you as they shoot. Uh, so, I'll demonstrate. Let's uh, go up here. I doubt there's anything in the coverage range in automatic. Unless there's something like right here. But if I go here and I shoot at something, let's just shoot out here. You can see him turning. Boom. And we can now follow this. It's going to reveal out the map for us as it goes. Now, I don't know if there's anything there. There's not. Okay. So, but that's kind of a, a decent way you could scout too. It's just kind of fire these out and see what's out there. So, you know, we could shoot one out here. So they are now shooting both of them. Oh, there's a biter base, so we could target that one. You see where he's gonna go. Okay, that's where that landed. We did find a biter base here though, so I'm gonna rain down two shells. Boom, so you can target it from the map view like this, or you can target it even, oh uh, geez, even from uh, zoomed in. Now this is another important note, guys. <laughs> this, um, this will aggro any buyers you hit. So this is a very important note that even though this is far out of range of typical aggro range, anything you hit with this artillery wagon, any enemies are going to aggro on the position that it fired from. Okay, so if it's like a stationary thing or you have it like pull up to an outpost and fire uh, and you want to protect the outpost, you will need some defenses. Um, Cause it doesn't matter on the range. If I shoot, you know, I mean, you saw how, well, this one's close, but even if it were way over here, um, there's a one man defense here. Even if it were way over here or whatever, they would still aggro and, and come and come for it. So you do want to be really careful with that and make sure you, uh, you are prepared. All right, so we have three more shells. Oh, this is barely out of range, uh, but we can go in here and one, two, three. So cool. All right, let's see. Ah, oh, we needed one more shell and we could have actually killed that base. I'm gonna have to run over there and do it myself. But, but yeah, so the artillery is a really nice automated way to do it. Like I said, you could, uh, like what I plan to do later on in this game is just attach like two of them uh, to my, uh, wow, need some more of this. It just attach like two of them to my outpost trains or even just have a dedicated train. Oh, did this actually die? There's another one here though. Um, or even have like a dedicated train that just goes around to special stops at all my outposts. Uh, and that way it can just clear anything that happens to be in range. Now in this particular game, as I've mentioned, I actually have expansion turned off, but if you have expansion on, and they keep encroaching on you, this can be an even better method. Um, it'll be even more useful because then every time the, the train, whether it be a dedicated train or an outpost train with these on it, go to your outposts, if the biters are trying to respawn bases that are in range of the automatic firing, 
um, it will just auto auto target them and destroy them, which is really really nice. So I wanted to give a demonstration of that. Again, I apologize for the confusion. Um, it, it can be a little confusing which what it's actually using is an indicator here, but to clarify again, it's the number of wagon or the number of wagons or turrets you have that actually have ammo in them. So it doesn't count them with the number here if they don't have ammo. But uh, but yeah, so this thing is pretty neat. Uh, I think I mean we don't have expansion on, so I'm not gonna like put them around my base because the biters are never going to expand into that area. Oh geez, I almost just plowed through that train. That would have been horrible. <laughs> um, I don't know why he. What are you doing? I think I was blocking. I think due to my signaling up there. I was blocked. Yeah, because there's no signal. Well, no, there's a signal here. Oh, it's a chain si Okay. See, again, this is why you put signals on your line. So, really, we should actually put... For now, we should put some signals, like, in here to break this up. Because this chain signal here was looking... All the way ahead to where I was, I think. Although, there's a normal signal here that should have broken it. That's kind of odd. Well, either way, there you go. So there's the artillery. Uh, super cool. We're going to be using a lot more in the future, like as we go expanding our rails and stuff. Uh, like once we have a uh, outpost train or a uh, engineering train, as uh, like a lot of us like to call it, for building outposts and stuff, uh, we'll probably just have artillery wagons attached to it. Or we may even just have a death train that's just like 15 or 20 artillery wagons that just we can just take out in the middle of nowhere and it'll just obliterate everything. Uh, let's see how we're doing here on our shells. They should be totally backed up. I mean, they only stack them once, so I'm actually just going to unlimit this chest, let it do whatever it wants. Uh, so let's go ahead and launch another rocket. We need all this stuff again. Was there anything up here I needed? I don't think so. Uh, but we should have it all built up at this point. I didn't get rid of the producers for solar or uh, accumulators. I did turn them off, though, like an idiot. I don't know why I turned them off. Did I turn off the accumulators too? The solar panels will be quite a bit quicker. Okay, sweet. So we've got those. Uh, we're going to need the low densities and some rocket fuel. Try not to grab the control units here. Uh, let's see. <laughs> My inventory is full again. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and dump a lot of this stuff in here. Okay, now we need the rocket fuel. And this should actually be backed up pretty far. How far is this backed up? Uh, halfway, maybe. Okay, so we've got that, and then we just need the solar panels. And this guy will be ready to launch. We'll get another thousand space science packs. And in terms of research, I mean, none of this takes space science. Um, this atomic bomb unlocks the atomic bomb, which is a vanilla item, which you shoot from a rocket launcher. Uh, and then, as I mentioned near the beginning of the series, I am using atomic artillery, which adds an atomic artillery shell, which obviously shoots from an artillery, but has the explosion range and such of an of atomic bomb here. So this unlocks with this. Um, these actually take space science. There's artillery shell range as well as shooting speed, which are infinite researches. And that same thing applies to worker robot speed as well as mining productivity, um, them being infinite researches. And uh, also, I think damage upgrades are infinite researches as well once you get up to that point. Uh, yeah, that's a shooting speed. Shooting speeds are not. But yeah, this is too. Infinite just meaning that it's, well, infinite. And they just keep increasing uh, at a certain rate. Some of them increase differently. Uh, as in, like, the robot speed doubles every time. I know there's a more technical way to say that, but whatever. <laughs> uh, it doubles. So this one is 1,000 of each. The next one will be 2,000. The next one will be 4, and then 8, and then 16. It gets very expensive. Uh, and then stuff like the mining productivity actually only increases by 100 each time. So, like, this one's 1,500, then the next level will be 16, 17, 18, 2,000, so on and so forth. Um, I'm not actually sure how these scale. I think these scale like the robots do, the robot speeds, as in doubling. And then the damage, I'm not sure either, because I never really get infinite damage upgrades. 
Uh, but yeah, because I mean, this would be pretty overpowered if it only went up 100 each time. Uh, and then there's no co uh, robot cargo size infinite research because that would be extremely overpowered. So there are those, and that's that's kind of like what the what the mega bases uh, do now. And you know, it's just like because they're doing X research a minute or whatever, so you just do uh, you know you just plow through those researches. You know, on my last mega base, I think I was at bot speed 19 and uh, mining productivity 600 or so. Which, as I mentioned before, this mining productivity gets pretty ridiculous. Uh, you know, to the point where you're getting like 15 pieces of ore for free from every single miner cycle. Uh, I want to check on oil because, okay, so that's being cracked. This is going into solid fuel, which is going up. That shouldn't really be going anywhere, should it? Wait, am I sending this to power two different ways? Oh no, <laughs> I'm using that for a few. I was like, why would I be doing two different... Thanks for that. Uh, we actually have 1.4k of this, which is pretty significant. And did I research ammo for that? Oh, I did research. So that's something we could set up. Let's set this up really quick. Uh, let's see. We're going to need piercing ammo, which we are making for military science. I'm almost tempted. Let's. I'm almost tempted to have them carry the uranium down rather than the piercing ammo up because we're going to need to make more piercing ammo. I don't want to pull it off the science. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put that there. Again, it's quite a long flight, but they'll get there. Once we get more spot speeds too, they'll be super quick. Uh, so we can just use the line we were using for military and just add some onto the end of it. So these uranium rounds are really, really good. We can test them out. All right, so ammo. Well, I could if there wasn't a damn solar machine in my way. <laughs> of course, this is like right where I don't want it to be. Sorry, you got to uh, you got to go there, bud. I'm not sure if we'll get a rocket launch this episode or not. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and place two here. Two should be good for now. Uh, okay, so he's just gonna do this. I think we'll have to use some long-handed to put them in chests because there's this belt. I could underground this actually. Could just do that. Okay, and export here and here. My inventory, I don't really want to get rid of those. It's mostly the rocket parts. Need those engines. Uh, okay, so we need some passive provider chests here and here. And I think for this we will use a condition. We will need a port as well. Uh, we'll just say if this is less than 200, because we don't need a ton of these themselves like to use really we don't want to use any of them uh for actual shooting so we've got that we got that and these are not going because they need normal ammo which oh right uh okay well that's fine we can just move this to like here we'll just copy that setting get rid of that there we go perfect okay so now we just need a robo port and this should be connectable probably to this guy Definitely. Is something else in here? It's like random steel in here. <laughs> of course there is. I'm just going to throw even more speed. Since we only have one now, just crank it up. Alright, so we wanted this robo port now. I can't find. Let's throw him... This would connect there. It doesn't really matter. For now, I'll just set it there. Okay, so these are going to go. That's in the passive providers. And now we want to make the, the uh, uranium rounds somewhere. I could throw them like over here. Kind of wanted to leave this for science to expand. Um, or in a central location, maybe. I could make them at the mall. That would actually probably not be a bad idea. Actually, yeah, why don't we do that here? There's not, due to how all this is like, like split off and split all weird. Um, I doubt we're going to be building anything that requires these materials right here. So I'm just going to throw these guys down and we should be in pretty good shape. Uh, really, I wanted this to line up, but we could just share chests. Okay, so you're going to go here and our passive provider, if I could find it. Did I not make one? It's going to go here. I have these right here. I don't know why I'm handcrafting them. I know you guys are yelling at me. 
<laughs> All right, so we're gonna grab those, export here, set that up, and I will use this. So I'm copying and pasting this to here, and this is requesting uh, not not much. So I think we're gonna increase that. It does take 10 seconds. Really, we should use these. I'm gonna increase this to like 10 because it is a bit of a flight distance for both. Um, so that doesn't actually use the thing. I don't know why my brain thought it would. It's good to still have this in a passive provider, uh, but we do need to use this. Like we still really want this because <laughs> we desperately need to use this stuff. And I'm gonna go stick some more of it. They must just be pulling that from storage. So I wanna actually put this in passive provider chests. Oh geez, I was about to just run like straight ahead across the track. I think I was paying attention. There we go. So they should be able to grab from there. And this guy, I mean, we use him for nukes. I think that's why I had it in my head because I just talked about nukes. Uh, but we haven't quite researched that yet. And I think we, as a final thing, can launch a rocket. We should have enough solar panels at this point made. Uh, we have 68. We should definitely have 32 built at this point, I would hope. And this guy will just cap here -ish. I mean, we, with our personal lasers and stuff, we're really not going to use this much, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to have some. Uh, okay, so we have pretty much what we need. All right, sweet. So I can now make a satellite. Gets rid of a lot of stuff in my inventory. And let's go put this in and launch another rocket, get a thousand space science, and we'll have to figure out what we want to research with it. Uh, okay, so stick that in and launch. Also, I'm going to stick this in because go sweet two rockets and there's our space science you can see there once you launch it once it doesn't bring up the like won the game thing it just counts up here satellites so we now launch two and here's our uh, space and we're ready to go I think that's going to do it, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the uh, artillery and the rocket launch and all that stuff. We now have uh, uranium rounds being made, which we'll have to test out. Maybe get in a tank and go shoot stuff because it's going to do a ton of damage. And uh, it should be a lot of fun. Anyway, I think that's going to do it. Any thoughts, questions you have, do leave down below as always. I'll do my best to read them and respond. But until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.